you're gonna sit there and try to tell me that that's a Harley Davidson? I got Harley shirts from every dealer all across the South. I got poker chips from all over this country from riding my great powerful V-twin from the west to the east, from the north to the south. And you're gonna sit there and try and tell me that that 2021 Harley Davidson Sportster S is a real Harley? I don't think so, brother. I kind of want to sit there and say I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't even know if that was like a Hulk Hogan impression or like a Shade Tree Surgeon or, uh, you know, Macho Man or Andy Savage. I think it was kind of all just all of them kind of mixed into one. So no more of that. I am going to wear this vest, though. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of the episode so you're just gonna have to deal with that all right welcome back whiskey chaser fam to another video this week we're talking about what everybody's talking about which is going to be the 2021 harley davidson sportster s release before we get too far into this video i just want to go ahead and remind you guys to subscribe if you're already a subscriber don't forget to leave a like and a comment for me down below i love you guys so much now, if you haven't seen it, you must have been sleeping under a rock or something, man, because it's making big news this week. Harley Davidson, in the middle of the year, launched a brand new motorcycle, 2021 Sportster S. So they're saying that this is gonna be kind of a brand new, but inspired by old Harley's uh, type bike. It doesn't look anything like a Sportster at all. The biggest thing you can compare it to is gonna be the V-Rod. We're just gonna get into it, I guess. Yeah, the whole premise of this entire release was evolution to revolution. They said that a lot during the actual video release. What that means physically is they went from the Evolution motor, the Evolution 883 and 1200, which was in the irons and the 48, to the Revolution Max, which is their brand new water-cooled V-twin that is the same motor that's in the Pan America. Now, this is not gonna be as highly tuned as the one in the Pan America. It's about 121 horsepower, 94 foot-pounds of torque, so it's still pretty powerful, but it's not what the Pan America is, even though it's the same displacement, same transmission, same all that kind of stuff. Weighs about 500 pounds, which is a lot lighter. My Sportster came in at 562 pounds, which is a little bit heavier than what most Sportsters are. Mine is a 2005 8A3 XL Custom, which was a little bit heavier, but I think that they come in around about 540 something like that so this is going to be about 40 something pounds lighter it looks like it's on this new frameless design they're basically using the engine as the frame so they can take a lot of that excess heavy duty metal out that obviously is going to reduce a lot of weight it uh, looks very sleek it looks very sporty it looks like it could take corners like nobody's freaking business. Does not look like a Harley Davidson. <laughs> this is gonna be the third bike that doesn't look like a Harley Davidson, which is good and bad. The last time that they kind of did this was with the V-Rod and that, that bike's a great bike. It's an amazing piece of machinery. The engine was made by Porsche or designed by Porsche, engineered, and the thing hammered. It was a killer bike. My buddy Matt, nine mils on two wheels, he rides a night rod, which is the all blacked out version of this V-Rod. And then my buddy Ryan actually has a 2015 V-Rod Muscle, which is sick. They're great looking bikes and they're powerful, they're fast, they look great, but it wasn't what Harley Davidson was all about, which is kind of weird that that's the direction it really went in the 80s and 90s, but you know, that's the way it was. Everybody saw Terminator, they all wanted that fat boy. It's a great looking bike. They had the live wire that came out, which that's a whole separate issue that we don't need to get into in this video. They had the Pan America, which was released at the beginning of this year, and then now they have the 2021 Sportster S, which is Sportster S. I get it, the name sucks. Whatever, we'll get over that, continue talking about the bike. 
So this thing has a all new four inch digital display on it, which to be honest, looks incredible. It has Bluetooth connectivity, you can do turn by turn navigation, has custom sport modes. It's about time something like this happened with Harley Davidson because they really, really needed it. Indian released their new lineup and the higher end models, the Chief, the FTR, a couple of those bikes came with this display which was fully customizable. You could do miles per hour, kilometers per hour, whatever, depending on what part of the world that you're in. You could have it as a tachometer, you can do turn by turn navigation, it has Bluetooth connectivity so you can control your music, anything like that. If you have a Senna or a Cardo up in your helmet, it's really, really cool. It's a great idea, uh, looks really good, which is something that is key. People don't realize that if you have something on your bike and it doesn't look good, you're not gonna be happy. Having something there on your bike that looks good, that makes you feel good having it, is gonna make you wanna buy it and use it. So having this good looking gauge that actually has a purpose is really, really awesome. Pretty sure it comes standard on all of the Sportster S's. Pretty neat because on the Indians, they do not all come standard. You can actually get an Indian with a actual analog gauge on it. I'll go ahead and tell you what I like and don't like about this bike. Some of the things that I really, really like about this bike. It's fast as fuck, boy. You kidding me? This thing looks like it rips 94 foot pounds of torque. It is crazy, specifically because of the way that the Revolution Max is engineered. And that's just wild to me. I love it. I absolutely think it's really, really cool. You are going to be able to rip this thing off the line. You are gonna be able to make it wherever you need to go in a very short amount of time. And it comes with a six-speed transmission. That's cool. It's been decades that people have been saying, why is the Sportster not come with a six-speed transmission? You're going 110, 120 miles an hour out in Mexico, and you're just, you're screaming at yourself for this six gear. It just, it's so needed. It's been so needed for so long. Finally, it's here. <sighs> Harley Davidson Sportster with a six gear. Yes, finally. The rev limiter on this thing is 9,500. RPMs. Dude, V-Twin almost 10,000 RPMs. That is crazy wild. This thing is going to be, I'm telling you, regardless of how you feel about the body style, regardless of how you feel about the looks, regardless of how you feel about all the electronics, everything like that, this bike is going to rip. And that's one of the great thing about Harley Sportsters is they were made to be the best small frame bike out on the market. They were made to beat everybody on the flat track races, on the hill climbs. They were made for that. And now they're gonna be able to, again, for a little while, you had the Scout, you had the Sportster, and you had the lesser known, but climbing in popularity, Bolt. Which, if you don't know, I have a Sportster and a Bolt. And the Bolt, it doesn't put down the same numbers as the Sportster does, but that thing rips. It is a fast bike and it surprises almost every single person who gets on it. Blockhead just did his bike giveaway and the winner got to pick out of all three of those which one he wanted. He went for the Bolt. He got the Yamaha Bolt. That's crazy, dude. Even Blockhead was riding that thing and he was like, you know what? It's not a 131 because it's not, but it just, it it's so good at putting power down. And so a lot of people started to see this, they started to recognize this, and they're like, you know, that Bolt is actually not that bad. And so the Scouts and the Bolts started rising in popularity, and those Iron 883s and Iron 1200s and 48s kind of started to lose a little bit of ground there. The fact that this thing is gonna be an absolute powerhouse is awesome. The price was not as bad as I expected it to be. I was talking to a couple of fellow moto vlogger friends of mine, and one of them said that he thought it was gonna be about 17K. I didn't think it was gonna be that much because I just felt like that was a little bit too much, but I still was not, I wasn't really putting that out of my mind because I know Harley Davidson and I know the way that they like to price stuff. I thought maybe it might be it, but you're looking at $14,999 for you know, your base model, and that actually includes all three colors, which I'm surprised about, because normally you get the black one for about 500 bucks cheaper, and then you have to pay 500 bucks to add on a color. 
but all three colors come in the same price, which is really cool, I think. It has the rear cowl that was designed after the 750, the Street 750. It has the big fat front tire. It looks cool. I mean, it doesn't look like a Sportster, but it still looks cool and that's cool. It, it's just got some really cool styling to it. The exhaust pipes, they look really good. It comes with, I think it comes with forward controls on it. I'm not 100% sure on that, but they looked pretty forward to me, so. And there's gonna be more models coming. This is the Sportster S. This is the very first one that they're releasing. There's gonna be more out there. Some people commute on their bikes. I commute on my bike. You're gonna want something that you can actually ride every single day. That's gonna be one thing about these other models that they're gonna to wanna to go for. And then they're gonna to wanna to go for like a Roadster style, like what they had with the with the old Roadster, where it was more uh, in tune, not to off-road, but just not, not street. It wasn't trying to take corners as fast as possible. There's gonna be more models that come out. We'll see what happens with that. I expect those to come out maybe in a couple of months, maybe about five, six months. We might see those around like, We'll see speculation around November, and then in about January, they'll start releasing some of those models and stuff like that. Yeah, it'll be cool to see what else, what else they come up with. All right, what do I not like about this bike? So the number one thing I really don't like about this bike, that cafe fairing that I mentioned, yeah, I said that it was cool that it was inspired by the Street 750, but it looks kind of cruddy uh they said that there's two up seating available for this thing that thing looks so janky and tiny and small and i really just don't like it and there's no rear fender like what 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 <laughs> I just think that's so weird. I get that some people don't like having a rear fender. They wanna get like that that bob style with no rear fender or anything like that, which is cool, that's fine. You can still put a little shorty fender on there. If you get caught in the rain, I don't know if you've ever ridden in the rain with no fender, but you rooster tail water straight up your back. It'll go right up under your jacket, your vest, your shirt, whatever, in dirty ass asphalt or concrete, whatever you're riding on, rainwater. And Fender is not going to completely eliminate that. I understand that. But it's still gonna be way better, way better with some sort of Fender on there, even if it's this big, just sticking out over the back. One of the biggest complaints about the live wire was it did have a rear fender, but it had this weird cutout right before the license plate. And if you rode that thing in the rain, it was literally spraying water straight up through that cutout all over you. And <laughs> that sucks, dude. It already sucks riding in the rain. Why would you want to take the risk to add that sort of inconvenience towards it sucking even more? I also said that the exhaust looked really cool and it does look really cool. It's like that super cool styling on the side with like the big giant cans, but that's literally just like a aluminum cover and the actual exhaust, if you look in the back, are these tiny, teeny little pee holes. <laughs> I don't know, man, like it just, it doesn't look like it sounds that great. It doesn't look cool from behind. It looks, it looks like junk. It looks like kind of junky. I understand that most people are gonna wanna replace that exhaust anyway, but the way that they've designed it, it comes up and around. It's gonna be difficult to replace that first off because it's so specific to this bike. It's not like other bikes where it just comes down and back. Second, it's gonna be so long before people actually are able to start manufacturing parts for this bike. So you're gonna be stuck with this <laughs> with this tiny little pea shooter uh, exhaust that, that you can't hear or the damn and whatever. I mean, I guess if it looks cool, it looks cool, right? That's all people care about. <laughs> The customization, kind of like it was a throwaway comment in this video, he said, you know, it's something that all people are used to with the name Sportster is the customization. You can make this bike your own. And it's very true because you can take a Sportster and you can make it into a cafe racer. You can make it into a chopper. You can make it into a bobber. You can make it club style. You can make it into a scrambler. You can make it into a full on ADV bike. You can do basically anything with this bike. And the reason why is because it's been around for you know 65 years now and there's a million parts available for it. And in fact, that's one of the things that Yamaha decided they were gonna go with with the Bolt. They said, man, you know, this Sportster has a lot of parts. Maybe we should make a bike that's compatible with this. Harley has made a bike so influential. Other manufacturers are making bikes 
to use Harley parts. That's huge. The customization that they showed in this video look like a joke. You can replace the mirrors and the turn signals and like maybe some parts that have different colors. There's gonna be customization later on because manufacturers are gonna make stuff or whatever, but that's like getting a brand new CBR and then taking your brake and clutch lever and switching them for anodized red and being like, yeah, bro, it's custom. Is it though? Is it? Is it? We'll see where it goes with the customization. I'm actually pretty excited to see what people do with this Revolution Max motor because it's already a powerhouse coming right out of the factory. And if you can do something to bump that up, this is gonna be a hell of a contender. You're gonna buy a 2021 Harley Sportster. It's gonna have a warranty on it and you're gonna wanna modify that thing. What's the only way you can do that? You have to go out and buy Screaming Eagle products and you have to get the dealer to put those on. I understand what they're trying to do there. If you don't wanna avoid your warranty, blah, 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 whatever. But you can't even, like, like you're not even gonna be able to switch your your mirrors. <laughs> you go out and be like, oh yeah, I want to get different mirrors for this bike. And be like, oh yeah, no, you gotta buy those from us. Oh, also we gotta install those. And you're like, but I could just do it in the parking lot in 10 minutes. Oh uh, no, no, you need us to do that. By the way, it's gonna be 75 bucks, and we're gonna have your bike for three days. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Now going back to that price, you're looking, like I said, $14,999 for any color. You're looking at all base models, whatever, all that kind of stuff, unless you add accessories on. And that's all well and good, like that's fine. You also look at 15K at Harley Davidson will get you a soft tail standard. You're looking at a 114. You're looking at a bigger bike, probably a little bit more comfortable. You're looking at something that's gonna be a lot more customizable, a hell of a lot more customizable, because that was that was the point of the soft tail standard, was it was supposed to be like the base model of the bike, and then you can build it up from there to become whatever you want. It's almost like they took the idea of the old Sportster and rolled that into what the soft tail standard now is and then they want to take the sportster and turn that into like a sport bike line and i don't know it just seems kind of weird to me not terrible but like i said you're looking at 15k that's that's a lot of money for a bike and if i was going to spend fifteen thousand dollars on a bike i mean i'm looking at like a standard or a street bob and it's like the same price and ugh, ugh, <laughs> But I guess that's just me. So like I said, the bike is cool. I think that they went with the name Sportster because it's synonymous with Harley Davidson. You are looking at a line of bikes that revolutionized motorcycles all over the world. Everybody knows what a Harley Sportster is. They're great bikes. They run forever. They're great. They're awesome, awesome, awesome bikes. And it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter what your riding style is, it doesn't matter if you are new or a veteran rider, it is a great bike and it always will be a great bike. So I think that's why they went with this name. I'm not quite sure if it goes with what they've released here. Who knows? It's like, I say that, but on the other hand, you also look at the V-Rod. They made a muscly, sporty bike, gave it a different name and it failed because people got mad at the fact that Harley Davidson was selling a water-cooled German engineered motorcycle. As a first gen model, I think it's fine. I am excited to see what happens in a year. I'm excited to see the new models. I'm excited to see what Harley decides to go forward with in this idea that they have. I don't think that they're gonna be getting rid of anything else anytime soon because that was one of the big things that happened at the very beginning of 2021 is they cut a lot of the fat out of the lineup. Obviously one of the reasons why they did that was to make room for bikes like this and for the Livewire and for the Pan America. And like I said earlier, they didn't want to get rid of that customer base. They kind of rolled that into what the soft tail standard, what the street bob is. They kept the fat bob, they made the fat bob look really cool. It's just they've, they've kind of grown up the Sportster into these other bikes and then they released this newer, fresher face under the same name. It's gonna be an interesting thing, man. Uh, I don't really know. I don't know how it's gonna be perceived. I'm already seeing people who are ready to burn Harley Davidson at the stake. So yeah, you know, like they wanna make a six sport bike. 
They want to make something cool. They want to make something fun. They want to be able to make this bike that's going to go on Laguna Seca and completely eat this track apart. But they can't do that because there are so many people out there who are just going to burn this company to the ground. Whenever it was announced that they were going to be opening factories in areas outside of the United States, they almost went bankrupt <laughs> because people were so mad. And I think that's just ridiculous. Your Harley is still made in the US and so are most Yamahas and Hondas and Kawasaki's. <laughs> like they're, they're still all made here. Just because they have a manufacturing plant in another country doesn't mean that they're not made in the United States. They are just, engineered in a different place or they don't want to make them in the united states and then ship them over to australia or ship them over to england or ship them over to china they want to make them there because it's cheaper to make them there and have them there versus put them on a ship and send them all over the place like and for all of you old school uh i'll only own a bike that looks a certain way, blah, blah, blah. Don't you worry because the Sportsters are still gonna be around. They've been around for 65 years. There's plenty of them. You see them all the time. Go on Facebook Marketplace. I guarantee you, you'll be able to find an affordable Harley Davidson Sportster and you'll be able to go get it today and probably drive it home because it's probably gonna run. Tires might not be so good, but whatever, you'll be able to just change those out. Might have a little bit of rust on it. Might need a primary oil change, whatever. Do a couple little maintenance things on it. That bike's gonna run just as good as new. I mean, the Sportster was always meant to be a performance bike. It was always meant to be that. It started out as that. They, they were losing flat track races, Harley Davidson. So they went out and they made this bike and it completely dominated. And, then it was so cheap that people started buying them they started customizing them there was a million things being done to them and that's how it became synonymous with with this this fully custom style bike because it was just so many parts were available for it i see kind of how harley is trying to get back to that and they're releasing a fast quick sport bike that people are going to be able to drive to the track race on the track and then drive home and it's kind of cool it's kind of cool not gonna lie so this is the end of the video and i have been kind of all over the place on how i stand on this bike i do like it i think that it looks a little weird i think it looks kind of dumb in some spots but i think it is going to perform well i really want to go ride one that's for damn sure just to see how it feels because i don't know it, something about it strikes me i like that harley kind of moved the custom bike standard into the soft tail standard and the street bob and that's something that makes harley davidson harley davidson is those types of bikes and or like you know they have their road glides and stuff like that the road glide specials and whatever and i think it's it's opening new doors i think it'd be all right so i don't know we'll see how it goes thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end of this video i know it was a little weird let me know your opinions. Let me know what you think about the Harley Davidson Sportster S 2021. And if we should go ride one, cause I don't know if we're gonna be able to, but I'd like to. So if you like this kind of content, this is the Whiskey Chase channel. My name is Chase. I do uh, motorcycle related content in and around New York City, all over the place, mostly in New York, cause that's where I live. Please don't forget to check out all the links down below. I do have a Patreon. If you'd like to become a Patreon member, we're looking for 10 and I'm gonna send out some really cool custom stuff just for those 10 Patreons, those first 10 Patreons. So go ahead and check those out. $1, $3, $5, whichever one you wanna sign up for. You also get access to the Discord. So check those out. Also, don't forget to leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and let me know what are the kind of videos that I should do around New York, around anywhere around here, or if I should just continue talking to the camera about bikes that I'll never be able to own. Let me know. <laughs> Thank you guys so much once again, and uh, see you later, brother.